Hello everybody, it's Shaderade here with another video for you. Today we're going to be talking about overclocking your graphics card, specifically the RX 500 series uh, for gaming and for mining. Um, if you're like me and you have you know a nice little gaming rig and you want to mine on your one graphics card that's in there and try to make a little bit of a profit from it because there really ain't much to be had in this market, um, I'm going to show you the steps that you know I've gone through to get mine working. Um, I do have my RX 570 8GB running at 31 mega hashes a second on Ethereum. Um, and my little 2400G pulls in about 184, whatever the hell it is, on Crypto Night uh, hashes a second, I think. So, uh, first thing, let's talk about the programs you're going to need in order to achieve this. ATI WinFlash um, is one of them. So, you're going to want to download ATI WinFlash. Um, I believe it is Polaris, oops, Polaris BIOS Editor. You're going to want to download Polaris BIOS Editor as well. Uh, GitHub should have it. And then Pixel Patcher. Pixel Patcher. AMD ATI Pixel Patcher. Okay, so I guess it doesn't work. Oh, there looks like there's one for NVIDIA as well. All right, so we're going to be talking about the AMD one, obviously. So try and download from, I don't know, whichever the newest one is. You know, there's got to be a reputable one on here somewhere. One of these companies has got to work. Um, but those are the three programs that you're going to need to pretty much modify your BIOS uh, safely and be able to switch over to like a higher hash rate and stuff like that when you, when you want to do mining with it. So besides that, everything else can pretty much be done you know, on the computer, and then with MSI Afterburner. So let's get started on um, overclocking it for the mining portion of it, and then we'll do gaming out how to switch back and forth between the two. So for mining, what you're going to want to do is pretty much overclock, or I mean modify your BIOS, and um, pretty much change your timing straps inside of there. So we're going to go into our PC, and I believe I have them on here. And, nope. I'm an idiot. It's in downloads. So uh, ATI, BIOS, um, Polaris BIOS Editor, and Pixel Patcher. Oh, the BIOS, that's just where I have my BIOS is saved into. Polaris is here. Um, so anyways, what we're going to do first is go into the Polaris BIOS Editor. No, no, no. I'm sorry. ATI is first. You want to go into ATI WinFlash, run as administrator. Okay, yes. Okay, so here in ATI WinFlash, what this does is this is how you pretty much change what's on your BIOS. It changes, you know, the what's programmed into, you know, into the hard memory inside of your BIOS. So this is the one thing that I pretty much I can guarantee you is probably going to avoid the warranty on your um, your card if you plan on doing this. So fair warning right here, this does probably. Uh, void your warranty right off the bat because you are changing you know all of the stats on the inside and stuff like that from this uh, but the first thing you're going to want to do before you do anything else is save your original bios that comes with this card at stock so your stock bios um, somewhere here onto your hard drive so save it um, i believe i'm just going to click it just to see and you'll you know go into your downloads or pick a folder you know that you're you know comfortable with or whatever and save it um, like I went back, created my own little folder, BIOS, and it saves in as a ROM file when you save it. Before, a lot of other people said you had to save it as a BIOS, like .rom, but mine always automatically saved as a ROM file because that's what it is. It is a ROM file. So save it somewhere safe and don't ever delete it, don't ever change it or anything like that because that's what you're going to need to like back up to if shit starts going haywire in the future. Um, which I ran into when I, I modded to a different BIOS and then tried to change my drivers. I uninstalled drivers and tried to put new ones, and nothing was working. So I had to go back to my original BIOS, uninstall drivers, reinstall drivers, and then mod it again. So make sure your drivers are all up to date and stuff like that for the most part before you do this. Um, otherwise, you might run into a little bit of an issue there. So save your original BIOS somewhere onto your computer. Uh, once you're done with that, I believe we can close this for now. So we're going to go back and we're going to Polaris BIOS Editor. And we are going to run as administrator and hit yes. You need to disable secure boot, blah, 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 click it, blah, blah, blah. We find an error. I don't remember that coming. Okay, just hit no. 
So there's two ways to do this. You can do the command prompt version, type stuff in and make it do it um, that way. Uh, I don't like doing that. I followed um, Voscoin, who has helped out a lot. He's got a lot of good, useful information. Check him out, you know, if you want a lot of other random stuff on building rigs and mining all different types of currencies and all different types of cards and all that kind of shit. He's got some good info. Um, but po Polaris BIOS Editor 1.6.7 um, is the one I believe that you're going to want to get, and it gives you a one-click timing patch. So what that's going to do is just pretty much automatically change your timing straps based on what it thinks you know is going to do the best for you, uh, and apply it by itself, and then you just save it, and you're going to load it into that ATI program, and um, go on from there. So um, I will show it to you just to see what it does real quick. So if I click one, click timing, no, sorry, no supported memory found anything scenario, please. Oh, that's strange. It, this has definitely worked for me in the past. Oh, you know what? You have to open BIOS, load your little BIOS that you just saved, BIOS.ROM. Okay. And then it gives you all of your numbers. I'm sorry, yeah, I was being dumb. I'm a little stoned. <laughs> so this gives you... Um, all of your settings that are currently programmed into your graphics card right now. And ch changing these numbers will possibly fucking ruin your graphics card. So do not fuck with shit that you don't know what it means. Over here is what's important. These are your megahertz and your timing straps. Um, so on here you can see the numbers are different when they get up to around here. Like C-O-A-D-E-F-3-1-7-3-B-5. So they are different. They look very similar through all these first numbers, but they are different for the most part. So when you click one click timings batch, micron memory found at index zero, now applying good micron mem uh, mining timings to 1500 plus bootstraps. And you click OK, and it changes them. And it automatically, which is kind of weird that it did my 1500 bootstraps that time, because the last time I did it, it applied 1625 bootstraps to my 1500 all the way up. And that I found out that wasn't my best setting. My best setting is the 1500 bootstrap all the way up. Um, and that's what I usually run to get my 31 mega hashes. So I'm glad that I did it right that time. That's kind of cool. Um, now in here as well too, power tuning. This is what people will um, tell you to do to undervolt your card and stuff like that. I'll be honest, I've watched a lot of different um, people you know, talk about it and stuff like that. And I'm still not really comfortable typing it into here. Like, I mean, I'm sure I'd be fine if I did it in here. Because what they're they're taking down is like the TDP, I believe, and uh, lowering it down a little bit. But I don't want it. I don't want to tinker with that. I can just lower it in MSI Afterburner and lower down my my clock speed a little bit, and it'll take it down to a reasonable, um, you know, wattage that I'm still making plenty of profit on. Because I live in Florida and electricity's cheap here. But you you can go watch um, Voss Coins, you know, videos. I believe a little bit further on power tuning if you want to try and you know, drop down your base wattage that your card's pulling and stuff like that even farther after you've you've done this. I'm just going to give you the basics. So now that we have our timing straps changed, that's all you have to do is click one, click timing patch, allow it to change, and you're done. That's it. That's all you have to do to mod your bio. So you're going to save as, and I have it in here already, which is my BIOS 3, um, is the one that has my 1500 timing straps all the way up already. So I'm, I don't need to save it again. And then you're going to close. And that's it. So now you have a modded BIOS file saved on your computer that is going to change your 1500 timing straps all the way up, which it, it's hard to explain exactly what that means because I don't, I'm not absolutely, you know, completely <laughs> familiar with all this different stuff. I, I've done a good amount of research, but there's still a lot to be learned. Um, but what it's doing is it's changing like how how fast the computing inside of the graphics card is running at different megahertz and stuff like that. You know, based on how fast your card is running, it's changing how fast it's thinking or something like the way it's accessing the memory and that kinds of stuff. Um, but I'm not going to get into it because I'll just sound stupid. So moving on past that, now that you have that saved in there, um, you're going to want to go back into ATI. And make sure before you do this that you have Pixel Patcher downloaded. Um, ATI, M, DAG, Patch, or whatever. You know, get the AMD one if you're on the AMD cards, obviously. Um, but you need to have this on your computer before you start fucking with shit, just, just in case, because this thing can be a lifesaver. So we're going to go into ATI WinFlash, and we're going to click. And, oops, I didn't run it. At, oh, it actually popped up without running it as administrator. Usually it doesn't do that. Huh. Strange. So let's run it as administrator. 
just to be safe, because that was weird that it opened without it. Um, and I'm not 100% sure that this isn't going to cut out my video on me when I do this. So if it does cut out the video here, I'm just going to make a part two right afterwards. And um, I will go over, you know, what to do right after this. So stay tuned if it cuts out. Go to my next video. I'll try to put a link in the video as soon, you know, within hopefully within 10, 15 minutes of getting this thing uploaded. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. So we're going to load image. Because right now I'm sitting at base stock. I have my, my BIOS is at stock right now. I have the stock one loaded. Because I went back and I was tinkering with all my, um, what's it called, drivers and stuff. My, my display drivers and everything. Trying to fucking see if I can get to a newer version. I still can't really. Um, so I'm at stock. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to my BIOS file. And this is where I have my BIOS is saved. And like I said, my BIOS 3 would have been the one that I just created. So in this folder, if this is what, you know, if you're following along with me, you would just have your original BIOS in here, hopefully. And the new BIOS that you just created, name it differently than obviously your regular BIOS. Don't try to name them exactly this, you know, close to the same thing, or it might fuck with you in the future. You can even put BIOS original in there, you know, if you want to be real safe. Um, and then put modded BIOS here, or 1500 time strap BIOS here. So we're gonna click it, hit oh oh shit, <laughs> click it, hit open, and it loads it up here as the file name, and it's showing right here current BIOS. Here some numbers, blah blah blah, image size, CRC. And you can see there's a difference between them over here and the image size and the CRC between the two BIOSes. So we're going to go ahead and hit program. And this is probably what might cut my video out. So let's find out and see what happens. It only takes about a minute or two. It'll program this new BIOS in. And uh, fingers crossed it doesn't fuck anything up or cut out my video and I can keep going with this. I am going to have to make a part two one way or another because you do have to restart your computer at one point. And since I'm not using a capture card from another computer, well, I'm going to have to restart the computer for this to work properly. So uh, we'll make a part two here in just a, a couple minutes. And uh, we'll show you all the steps. So we'll give this a little minute to run through. You, it's Sometimes it takes you know a couple minutes. Sometimes it's a little bit quicker. I guess it depends. I'm streaming or I'm recording to the hard drive as well right now too. So that's probably eating up a little bit. A little bit of extra CPU power. So wait for this guy to finish, sorry. Bam, all right, we're good. So hit OK. And you have to reboot this system before these changes take effect. Hit no. Fair warning, hit no right now. You're going to have to reboot, that's fine, but this is why we downloaded Pixel Patcher. So close this, we're good. It has, it has done it. Go into your Pixel Patcher. Run at Pixel Patcher as administrator. Hit yes. Have it pop up. And it's going to tell you right away that it found a whole bunch of things that it can patch. Um, and it's, you know, limits and what it is, is like driver signatures and security signatures and stuff like that, you know, that you, that might've gotten changed that might not get recognized. So if you don't do this and you reboot your PC, your graphics card might not work properly and stuff like that because it doesn't recognize it. You know, I've had that happen. Like I said, nothing was working correctly. I couldn't even get it to display at 1080 anymore or anything like that, um, until I patched it or until I you know, went back to my original BIOS and then patched it with this on the original BIOS and then rebooted and everything worked okay. So um, we're going to hit yes and let it patch all these different little things real quick. It'll say driver successfully patched and signed and you hit okay. And that's it. That is all it takes to modify your BIOS. It's that simple. So now we are completely modded and we're going to be running anywhere from you know two to four mega hashes hopefully faster than what it would have been if we didn't modify our bioses so if you're running out of stock bios right now and you haven't done any of this stuff give this shit a shot and see what kind of numbers you come up with um, but we're going to go ahead we're going to have to restart our computer so i'm going to stop this recording and let it save onto the hard drive and then um, we're going to go over to part two so i'll see you guys in just a minute